So today I'm going to be reviewing a concise but detailed book on boxing. Hi guys, my name is Joe and welcome to Fighting Words, the martial arts library. On this channel I review martial arts books and talk about other martial arts related subjects. The subject for today's review is Boxing, the Complete Guide to Training and Fitness by Dana Scott, published in the year 2000. Dana Scott has been a coach at all levels of boxing and she's been doing this for quite a number of years at this point. She's still active from what I can tell. In the relatively brief intro, we get the author talking about the fitness benefits of boxing and she also gives some advice on what sort of equipment to buy. She'll sort of rate whether or not you should buy this equipment depending on how much you've invested in boxing. So for a beginner, I think this is a pretty good startup. Chapter one goes over the basic physical equipment for both men and women. And this includes everything from the shoes to shorts to hand wraps to headgear. The most detailed part of the section are on the gloves and the headgear, talking about the type of headgear you'd want, again, depending on where you are in your boxing journey. In the next chapter, she talks about wrapping the hands and gives three different examples of how to wrap the hands. I've actually used the second method myself for a number of years, and I appreciate that the author gives multiple options for this relatively simple but also essential procedure here. When it comes to wrapping the hands, she will differentiate between what types of hand wrapping techniques are good depending on the length of hand wrap that you are using. Chapter 3 is relatively brief. It does go over the basic boxing stance. And in this, she does provide general principles for a good stance. For instance, keeping the chin down and looking through your eyebrows, essentially. Things like that. In chapter four, we get the basic punches, the straight punches, the jab and the cross or rear straight. You also get lead and rear hooks, as well as the uppercuts. The overhand is absent, not really a problem, that's sort of a specialty punch. In this, she will describe the mechanics of the punches with pretty solid details and gives tips for the various punches as well. For instance, noting with the jab, don't lead with your elbow, you gotta lead with your fist. Chapter 5 gets into the footwork. As you can see in this photograph, she has marked on the ground in tape the shape of an X that shows the starting position for each of these footwork movements. And she goes over the basic linear and some pivoting movements as well. She will also relate the different footwork movements to punches, because after all this is boxing. For instance, noting that if you're moving to your left, you're going away from your opponent's right hand, but you got to look out for their left hook because you're moving in that direction. She also advises to throw a counter punch after you pivot every time. The next chapter, chapter six, shows a few different combinations. I appreciate what she does here is she gives an explanation for why you were throwing the punches that you are in this combination. For instance, she notes that hooking off of your jab allows you to throw multiple punches from the same side, which could confuse your opponent. In this chapter, she also will briefly cover specific targets for each punch, and also as a reminder to move after you throw every combination, which is good advice that sometimes gets overlooked because you don't want to stand in front of the person admiring your work after you finish a punch combination, because they're probably going to want to hit you back. <laughs> Defense is covered in Chapter 7. Uh, the author goes over multiple types of defense, for instance, snapping back, and parrying, covering, and so on. And she does give some strategic advice when it comes to how to use your defensive skills. For instance, she says, if you're slow, don't really try to slip, because you're probably not going to be fast enough. Chapter 8 is on strategy and styles. The strategy section covers how to close the distance and cut off the ring, as well as how to fight off the ropes. In other words, if your back is to the ropes, how to fight out of that position. In this section, she also goes over different styles like the long range boxer, the in fighter, the counter puncher, and the southpaw, which isn't really a style. 
she gives each of those a paragraph and then offers some tips on how to counter those styles. The final chapter is on how to train. Now, this covers a general idea for a boxing program, but it will also cover the different uses of equipment and also different exercises, calisthenics that one can use. We're talking everything from, you know, using things like the speed bag and the medicine ball to things like basic push-ups. It finishes with her providing basic nutritional advice and also a basic weekly workout. As far as the pros go, as I mentioned, this is very much designed for a beginner. It's extremely easy to follow along with and has a lot of good advice for people who have never boxed before and even some people who have been boxing for a little while and sort of getting their feet under them. As well, as I mentioned up front, it's sort of concise but detailed. The author will provide a number of tips for the various sections, not really wasting any space, being very efficient with her use of words, but definitely getting her point across. As far as the cons go, to me, part of the tone of this was sort of the author, or the book, having a bit of an identity crisis. There's a heavy emphasis throughout the book, for instance, on the fitness benefits of getting into a boxing program. At the same time, there are also sections of the book where she's clearly talking to people who she expects to enter the amateur or possibly professional fighting ranks. So, sometimes it felt a little unclear to me whether this was more geared towards people who w only want to box for fitness, you know, to, to hit the bag and to do the push-ups and skipping rope and all that, or whether it was oriented towards people who had an eye toward competition. Could be that I'm splitting hairs here. I don't consider it a tremendous drawback. Just tonally, it seemed to almost be two, for two different audiences. As well, and this is a super minor point, and I, I'm unsure whether to even call it a con, but I do wonder whether some of the fitness and nutrition information is up to date. It's been 20 years or more since this was published. So I wonder if some of that information might be updated at this point. As far as recommendations go, if you are a beginner with an interest in boxing, <laughs> This is definitely a good book to have. Uh, I think it's still in publication. Again, it covers everything from the, the type of equipment you want to buy and what you should buy first, depending on where you are in your journey with boxing. And it also covers things like creating a boxing workout and how to use the various pieces of equipment. And then finally, we get into things that are a little bit more advanced, things like strategy and how to cut off the ring and things like that. Definitely useful for a beginner, and I would even say to an extent an intermediate boxer because you can never get away from the basics. You know, fundamentals win fights, right? Thank you for following along. That's all I have for this week. Uh, if you like the video, please leave me a thumbs up. If you'd like to support the channel or if you have a suggestion for a book for me to review, please consider donating to my coffee account. I'm going to put a link to that in the description. And that's all I got. See you around.